If you watch any of my other videos, you know I love frugality. And in the spirit of frugality, I meal prep majority of my meals, brew most of my coffee at home, and even wear the same shirt every day. However, sometimes we can take frugality a little too far. And hi, if you're new to China, my name is Tay from Financial Tortoise, where we learn to grow our wealth slow and steady. Number one sign you've taken frugality too far. You neglect your health and spirit of saving money. Health is one of those things you'll never get back once you lose it. In a university commencement speech many years ago, Brian Dyson, then CEO of Coca-Cola, shared an illustration called the five balls of life. Imagine life as a game in which you're juggling some five balls in the air. You name them, work, family, health, friends, and spirit. And you're keeping all of these in the air. You will soon understand that work is a rubber ball. If you drop it, it will bounce back. But the other four balls, family, health, friends, and spirit, are made of glass. If you drop one of these, they will be irrevocably scuffed, marked, nicked, damaged, or even shattered. They'll never be the same. You must understand that and strive for balance in your life. Essentially, health is one of these glass balls. If you drop it, it will never be the same again. You'll live with the consequences, the long-term damage for the rest of your life. I know, because all those physical injuries that I received in my 20s because I thought I was macho, well, I'm now paying for them. Some ways I've seen people neglect health in the spirit of frugality are these. Buying only cheap food. Fresh fruits and vegetables can be considered expensive when compared to cheap fast food. But you'll be paying more in healthcare costs in the long run if your primary diet is made up of $4 Burger King Whoppers and Costco's $1.50 hot dogs. Only seeking free exercise. Yes, exercise is one of those things that you can readily get for free. There are tons of free parks and walking trails. However, if you want to take your health to the next level, at times, it pays to pay. For example, when I was trying to perfect a specific lifting movement, I actually paid for a fitness trainer to come and coach me. And it turned out to be one of the best money spent because they were able to catch my four mistakes before I knew they even existed. Skipping medical care or worse, trying to get by without health insurance. Medical expenses are the number one cause of bankruptcies in the United States. You wouldn't drive without a seatbelt, so why would you go about without health care? And with the implementation of Affordable Care Act, a lot more people have access to health care than ever before. Number two sign you've taken frugality too far. You neglect relationships in the spirit of saving money. In 1938, Harvard researchers embarked on a decade-long study to find out the answer to this question. What makes us happy in life? The researchers gathered health records from close to a thousand participants and asked detailed questions about their lives over a period of 85 years. And this was the finding. Close relationships, more than money or fame, are what keeps people happy throughout their lives. It wasn't career achievement, money, exercise, or a healthy diet. Happiness was directly correlated to the depth of individual's relationship. But instead of spending our resources on what makes us truly happy, some of us actually go the other way. We socially isolate ourselves from our friends because we think spending time with them will make us spend more money. We stay away from family outings because we don't want to spend a penny. Now, not all fun has to cost money. If we're smart, there are cost-effective ways to enjoy the company of other people without clearing out our checking account. However, the issue is when we place saving money as a more of a priority over spending time with our family and friends. At the end of the day, money is there only as a tool to enable us to live the life that we want. Never neglect relationships over saving money or you'll be left with a fat bank account, but no loved one to share it with. Loneliness kills. It's as powerful as smoking or alcoholism. Number three sign you've taken frugality too far. You neglect time. You just don't place enough value on your time that it deserves. Outside your health, your time is another one of your greatest resource. No matter how hard you work, you can never get more time. You can't mine it from the ground. You can't invest it to earn 10% more time. And you will not find a magical box of more time at the end of the rainbow. Once you use it, it's gone. When my wife and I first got married, she would take me to a store called Ross, a discount clothing store. It was where she always shopped for clothes growing up, and she thought if we're trying to save money, what better place to buy clothes than the one place where you can find great deals. So we'd spend hours, sometimes days, looking for deals. If we couldn't find one today, we'd come back tomorrow. All in the hopes that we would find the perfect shirt or the perfect dress at the perfect price. Not realizing that in the hope of saving $10, we were actually wasting our most precious resource away. Time. Be careful how you spend your time. It is one resource that we all have an equal amount, regardless of how rich or poor we may be. In the spirit of saving time, sometimes you might want to save time in your personal finance journey by talking to an expert to discuss your financial situation. So for a limited time, I'll be opening up my calendar for one-to-one -one money coaching sessions, a dedicated time where you can receive feedback directly from me, or if you just want to make a cool new friend. The money journey can be quite lonely, and sometimes you just want to get some unbiased feedback without being sold anything. If you think this could be a value add to your financial journey, please go to my website to learn more. I'll also have a link in the description below. Number four sign you've taken frugality too far. You intentionally neglect necessary home maintenance and repairs in the spirit of saving money. In college, I majored in criminology. I know, a very applicable major to my current profession. One of the major theories in the field of criminology is the broken windows theory. A theory based on the idea that visible signs of crime such as graffiti or broken window creates an environment that encourages further crime and disorder. Essentially, if we had a broken window in the neighborhood and we never bothered to fix it, 
it would create an environment of neglect and therefore crime down the line. Now, why am I talking about the broken window theory on the personal finance YouTube channel? I think there's a similar application to how we treat our home. When we neglect necessary investment back into our home, it could create an environment of neglect and disorder to our own living environment. Our roof is leaking. However, because we're so tight-fisted, we decide that a bucket under the leaking roof is fine for this year. Then we wait two years, which leads to five years. And soon enough, other things go neglected, and our home starts to look like something out of a horror movie. And we're not even talking about the health and safety hazards. Leaky roofs can lead to mold and mildew, insulation damage, and even a fire hazard. Our environment shapes our behavior more than we realize. Create the ideal environment for ourselves by not neglecting necessary reinvestment into our homes. Number five sign you've taken frugality too far. You intentionally skip car maintenance in order to save money. The oil change light has been blinking at you for the past four months, yet you ignore it. Your tire threads are so worn down that barely any exist, yet you think, what's the harm? You essentially have no brake pads because you never replaced them since you bought the car, but you have no plans on replacing them anytime soon. Your car plays an essential role in safely transporting you and your family from point A to B. Would you ever get on a train that hasn't been serviced in years? How about a plane that didn't go through the necessary maintenance checks before it took off? So why would you put yourself in a car that isn't up to standard? I know going to the maintenance center at times can be frustrating. You go in thinking it's only going to be a $40 oil change and you come out with a $300 bill. So you keep pushing and pushing it off. But no amount of saving money is worth our safety. Which leads to the next sign of taking frugality too far. Number six sign you've taken frugality too far. In the line of skipping necessary home repairs and car maintenance, you're willing to compromise safety in order to save money. There are many times where the quality or price really doesn't make that much of a difference. I could care less if my t-shirt was $10 or $100. To me, a t-shirt is a t-shirt. Wearing a $100 t-shirt doesn't make me any safer than wearing a $10 or even a free t-shirt. But there are some items where compromising on quality can literally mean life or death. I recently had a conversation with a police officer whose side hobby was rock climbing. And one of the things that he talked about was when it came to rock climbing, you never want to compromise on your gear. Your life is literally on the line when you're on the wall. So you never want to use a cheap carabiner or a harness. You get the best. It's the same with car seats for kids. There are very specific safety criteria around child safety seats and for a good reason. According to the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, car safety seats reduce the chance of fatal injury by 71% for kids under one years of age. But car seats can be expensive. You're tempted to skimp a little on car seats. You get a used car seat or a hand-me-down, not bothering to check the expiration date. But think twice. There is a reason why car seats have an expiration date. The plastic in the car seats can become brittle over time. That means that in a car accident, the seat designed to protect your child can shatter rather than absorb the impact like it was designed to do. And most cars and car seats within them are exposed to extreme high and low temperature that are especially hard to mold the plastic, causing it to degrade over time and reducing its ability to absorb impact. Your child's life is not worth saving a few dollars over. Number seven sign you've taken frugality to too far. You're hoarding and stockpiling items just because you got a good deal on them or you can't get yourself to throw them out. Who cares if you don't need them right away or never used it once? You might one day, right? But what you aren't realizing is that there's actually a cost to hoarding. Not only does your home look like a warehouse, you have a hard time seeing what you have. Not to mention the stress of seeing your house cluttered. You might not think it bothers you, but subconsciously it does. As stated earlier, your environment affects your behavior a lot more than you think. What I like to do is go through my closet and my drawers at least once every quarter and do a deep cleansing of everything I own. If there are clothes I haven't worn in six months, I save them for goodwill. If there are food items in the pantry I'm doubtful I'll eat anytime soon, out to trash. I like free ketchup packets like the next frugal guy, but is there really a good reason to have a hundred of them in your kitchen drawer? Maybe just keep a few for when you're on the road. At the end of the day, check your hoarding habit. We should be choosing what we want to keep, not what we want to get rid of. Number eight sign you've taken frugality too far. You skimp on tipping. You can afford to eat at a restaurant, but you choose to go light on tipping in the spirit of saving money? Let's think twice. We shouldn't feel like we have to be overly generous and give more than we can afford. However, we know when we're truly being stingy and cheap. Your server worked hard to serve you during your time at the restaurant. So let's be a responsible consumer and tip appropriately. Number nine sign you've taken frugality too far. You never treat yourself. Three words for you. Treat yourself. Treat yourself 2011. You're being good with money so you can enable the life that you want, which includes at times treating yourself. Now don't go overboard in the spirit of treating yourself, but if you're a recovering frugal addict, you probably don't have a problem in this area. Your problem is actually spending. Identify what spending would bring a smile to your face. What would give you that extra boost in your day? For my wife, given she grew up having to always wear hand-me-down clothes or shop at discount clothing stores, her version of treating herself is to shop for clothes based on what she loves, not the price. So she has an annual clothing budget that she can use on whatever she pleases. For me, given I always had to borrow books from the library growing up, my version of treating myself is the ability to buy as many books as possible for my bookshelf. Of course, quality books that I love to read over and over, and ideally, hardcover. All of our versions of treating ourselves look different, but give yourself permission. 
If you constantly deny yourself the simple pleasures of life in the spirit of frugality, you will naturally find yourself stressed, guilty, and anxious. Even a small release will go a long way. Spend extravagantly on the things you love and cut costs mercilessly on the things that you don't. Number 10 sign you've taken frugality too far. Your frugality, the extreme money-saving initiatives, is not tied to any future goals. You're just being frugal just for the sake of being frugal all the time. Now, if you're doing some frugal stuff like wearing your clothes until they have holes in them, cutting your own hair, and never eating out because you're trying to pay off some debt, and you're doing them for a specific period of time, I totally understand. There's a specific reason why you're doing them, the end state and the time frame. However, if you're just being extremely frugal just for the sake of being frugal all the time and because you're afraid of spending money, I feel like we need to do some self-assessment. When my wife and I were trying to pay off our student debt, we didn't take any vacations, no anniversary trips, and not even weekend overnighters. And if we're honest, it was miserable. But at the time, we had a concrete goal we were working towards and we were harnessing all our frugal muscles towards that goal. But as soon as our debt was paid off, we took our feet off the pedal a bit. The frugal habit at the time was miserable, but because it was tied to a specific future goal, it made it all worthwhile. Frugality, saving money, self-restraint, these are all habits that exist so we can design the life that we love. Don't make the habit the ultimate goal. Number 11 sign you've taken frugality too far. You don't invest in the stock market. You're so terrified of losing money, you can't get yourself to invest money in the stock market. Yes, the market is volatile. The money you invest today can drop by 30% tomorrow. But if you want to multiply your wealth, you have to invest your money in assets that appreciate. And for individuals like you and I, the stock market, or more specifically, broad market index funds provide the best avenue to grow our money. However, if you're afraid of losing even a penny because you're so frugal, you'll shy away from the risk the risk of the market. You might decide to keep all your extra money in low risk savings account or a certificate of deposit. But in the long run, your money would not have grown. In actuality, it would have lost value because of inflation. Frugality is an excellent habit to save money, but don't take it so far that you miss out on one of the greatest opportunities to multiply your net worth through the stock market. Number 12 sign you've taken frugality too far. Worse than not investing in the stock market. You don't invest in yourself so that you can save money. I just mentioned how great the stock market is for investing our money. But do you want to know even a greater asset to invest your money in? yourself. You want to increase your ability to make more money? Invest in a marketable skill so you can demand a higher income in the marketplace. You want to increase your ability to overcome challenges? Invest in programs that help you face your fears. When you strategically invest in yourself, you as an asset will produce more returns than any other assets out there. But when you skimp on investing in yourself, you're denying yourself those returns. For me, self-investment comes often in the forms of books, conferences, and training programs. I get excited whenever I come across a book or a program that could upgrade my skills. Now, of course, you want to be mindful of the program. Check to make sure it's not an overly priced, get rich, upsell programs. But the bottom line is this. Don't take frugality so far that you're denying yourself the opportunity to grow. Invest in yourself. Thank you guys for watching. And in the spirit of growing ourselves, if you want to learn some of my most favorite productivity habits, please check out my video here. Until next time, all the best.